Hey everyone, National Master Sean Lay here. In today's chess video, we'll be going over not one, but two delayed Alapin games. One in which I played the delayed Alapin as white, and one as early as move like six or something. And the other one, I win playing against the delayed Alapin when an opponent played a structure very similar to it. Alright, let's get straight into it. Alright, so... We have a Sicilian defense over here. I know a couple of you guys said you guys really like the late Alapin, so we're going to be seeing a lot more delayed Alapin games nowadays. Now, opponent plays the main line, and we're going to play bishop e2. Now, there are other variations here, like bishop d3, that are fine, but I like bishop e2 because of the surprise factor, giving up a free pawn as early as move 2 or 3. And in this position, it looks like it's a free pawn still. So, should our opponent take it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. And so in this position over here, what black is going to do? Well, he took the pawn and subsequently he will now lose the game, which is not very good. So queen a4 check, win the knight. And <laughs> if it can fall the 1760 player, it can probably fall the, the opponents that you guys play as well. Well, quite an easy game if I do say so myself. All right, let's play another one. Now let's play against this 1800 rated player. All right, now we're gonna have to try a little bit because if we lose this one, we lose a lot of rating. That's not good. So our opponent is playing a delayed Alapin as well. Um, now he didn't have to play d3 because the queen over here check would have um, sufficed. Now I can play c5 and we can go into Sicilian defense. So let's just do that. No Philidor today. Let's play Sicilian defense so we can actually see what to do against a delayed Alapin like this. So one of the key things in this opening is you wanna keep an eye on this e4 square. You want to make sure your opponent cannot um, play d4 for free. And so right now, I'm just going to develop my pieces like this. He's going to play knight d2. Trying to protect e4 so he can play d4. Which is fine. Perhaps g6 wasn't the best move in this position. Maybe d5. Wait a second. Our opponent gives us the free pawn. If we take here, and then they play queen d3... Because they want to take here. Well, the question is, can I not just take here first? And no matter which way they take, I'm just going to capture back on e4. Right? If I play this, ah, but he has the trap. If I take here, then he can play d5. Then he can play queen a4 check. But what if I play queen a5 check in between move first in this position? Seems a little bit interesting. In fact, I'll do it. I think it's pretty good here. Let's just take there. If he plays d5, we play queen a5 check in between move. That way he cannot play queen a4 check. <clears throat> and our position is fine here. This is a common idea in the normal delete elephant as well. So our opponent probably did not expect this to happen. We'll just get to trade off pieces no matter what happens. And life is good. Life is good indeed. Opponent's thinking. How does he get out of this situation? Now, I do have some short-term weaknesses in which I'm not developed at all, which is an issue. You want to be developed in these type of situations. Now, if I take here, it's just utter devastation because he gets over here and then both my pieces are under attack. So I don't want that to happen. So I think I just move the knight back. I don't want to move it here because knight captures pawn captures and I have some weird pawn structure here. And I think knight just back is fine, even though it undevelops a piece right now. I'm just going to have to play a lot more carefully. I do have a strong bishop that's going to come over here. He can play bishop d4, actually, which is a little bit annoying. But I'll just play f6 or something. And my bishop's not going to be too happy right now, but it can be happy in the future. So, it is what it is. This is going to be a very defensive game now. Now, he plays queen over there. I think that's worse than bishop d4, to be honest. I think I'm just going to play f6. I'm going to play bishop g7. And now this bishop can have some potential, you know, temples against the opponent here. I can even try to get the knight to e5. That's a strong square for my knight. I don't think my opponent has a lot of counterplay here. Like, what is he trying to do? I don't know. Okay, so he just develops his pieces. I'll just develop mine as well. And then if we both just develop pieces, guess who will come out on top? It's me, because I'm up a pawn. And I'm also threatening f5 in this position, just threatening to, you know, attack the queen, win the pawn on c3, and then that's that. That's the game, essentially. So our opponent moved back. He probably wants to attack this guy a little bit. Um, I think we're just going to play knight over here, maybe hop our knight over there. Um, 
Oyster better move. I, I think that's fine, to be honest. Yeah, let's just pop the knight there. Maybe we can play queen c5. The reason why helping a knight here is also very strong is because the e6 square cannot be used by knight then, because he'll trade off pieces. So, again, we're just trying to limit our opponent's counterplay. Once that's done, it's an easy, breezy win from here. So our opponent's attacking our pawn, quite obviously. Um, do we play queen here and force the trade of queens? Mm -hmm. Do we do that? Or do we just play knight e5? I think we just play knight e5 anyways. It's a move we wanted to play. Now, we could capture with this pawn, but it does allow him some opportunities to get a passed pawn, which is not what we want. We're okay with him taking here, even though our bishop's not the best bishop in the world. We get an open f fall over here, as well as the ability to basically, you know, have a strong center and stop the c pawn if it decides to run all the way down the board. Opponent moves back like this. Do we play b6 here? He's trying to play c4, and not that I really care, but... I think we just play b6. It does create some light square weaknesses, but it should be fine in the long run. Because there's... Outposts are best used by knights, not really by bishops. Bishops go to outposts. It's like, sure, why not? It's not the biggest thing in the world. We're just trying to play queen c5 in this position. Maybe even a bishop a6 first. Our opponent's trying to play c4. We're just trying to play safe. Like, their pawn structure here is not that good. If they even play c4, this bishop's stuck defending, you know, the c4 pawn forever, and that's not good. It's not good at all. So, my opponent's thinking here. That's a good time to think what plan you want to make in this position. I think the best idea might be just trying to go a4, a5. Now, maybe he's trying to play f4 here. Well, when I say maybe, I mean 100% he's trying to play f4 here. Which is why he played that move. Though I'm not sure if f4 is even the move they want, because that opens up my bishop. Now, if his idea was just trying to win my pawn on e7, which it's looking more and more like he's trying to just win my pawn on e7, then it's an okay plan. Um, the question is, do I want to play a5, just set up a cheaper with bishop a6, with rook c8? What if he plays f4? I take, he's going to take on e7, that's his plan here, maybe a5, and if he plays this move over here, I have bishop a6, he'll play c4. I'm not even scared of him taking here, to be honest, because my bishop will capture back, so... Actually, I'm going to play a5, not for the cheapo, this actually is a pretty strong move, because it sets up bishop a6, ooh, that would have been a disaster, but, um, and it, if it forces c4, then that becomes a target for me to attack, and b6 is weak, but then I can easily defend it with my pieces, so I'm not too scared about that. I think bishop e3 here in between move makes a lot of sense first. No, but then mm, c3, but then he takes on b6. I'll play queen c7, and then I even protect the e7 pawn too. Like, my, my weaknesses in this position aren't really that weak. My opponent's weaknesses, on the other hand, quite weak. Huh. A4, if I play bishop a6, he'll play c4. Um, and what if I pile up on that guy? Hmm. I think I'll just play bishop a6 first, attack that piece, force c4, force the bishop to be on b3 forever, which is quite sad for our opponent, to be honest. Opponent doesn't want his pieces to look like this, but he's kind of forced to have his pieces look like this. It's not good. Yep, I think we just pile up on the guy. Bishop e3 is a little bit annoying though, attacking my b6 pawn, but it is what it is. Uh, Alright, we'll just pile up on the guy. He'll play rook c1 most likely, but then I'll get something like queen a3. Little bit annoying for our opponent. Maybe not even queen a3, maybe queen b4. No, queen b4 if he plays bishop e3. Hmm. What do we do? I think a rook wants to be on c7, where it's 
uh, defending e7 as well and attacking c4. It's pretty strong. One thing I want to do is probably trade off dark square bishops. Opponent's thinking quite a bit for a five minute game here. Might be his downfall when he was low in time. Opponent's thinking. He can't move the other rook there because my rook on f8 can take on f2. That's no good for opponents. So he's thinking, thinking quite deeply. Think, think, think. Think, 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 think. Think, think, think. He's thinking hard. He said, he's thinking, should I defend my c4 pawn? Hmm. <laughs> now this move is quite obvious what they're trying to do. If I take here, they're going to try to play rook c1. But the question is, do I care about that? To be honest, it actually looks like a pretty free pawn. I'm not going to lie here. It's pretty free. Because if I take rook c1, I can take here. Maybe if I'll take here and there's a pin over here and queen c1 because it comes with a check root ski over here. But I just play rook over here. And what if queen takes? No. According to my tactics over here, which aren't the best for sure, it seems to be a free pawn. So I think I'll take the free pawn. See a free pawn, take a free pawn. Am I right, guys? And then I'll take here. Threatening to win the bishop. He'll take this one way or another, I think. Yeah, I mean, he has a dark square bishop. What's he going to do? Like, seriously? This tactic is not the most well thought of. Even though my opponent did spend a couple seconds here. Queen over here is expected. Oh, rook over there. Queen over there. I guess I'll play the same thing. Doesn't really matter. And if he just trades everything off, I'm completely fine. He can never play rook c1 because it comes with a check root ski, which makes our opponent not happy. Now, the next two moves, I just need to get my king out of the way and life is good. Life is good indeed. So. Our opponent had a good run. But it all ends here. Bishop e3 makes the most sense, I think. <laughs> He's literally just trying to move his king away. Okay, I'll show you that I can do that, but better. I'll move my king away. And then I'll move my queen away. And what do you have, my friend? Other than complete sadness. He's trying to play king h2. Uh, yeah, it is what it is, though. Now, this is what I call a suspicious move, because the idea behind it is a little bit obvious, if I do say so myself. So, so, so... Opponent doesn't want to trade off pieces, but... No. Alright, makes sense. He's attacking this guy. If I defend it, he'll play bishop e3. So the best idea here is to just take on a4. Yep. He'll take on b6. We'll play bishop over here. Make sure we don't get back rank mated. He'll play bishop h6 or something, or rook h6. Doesn't really matter. If he wants to trade off pieces, I'm down to trade off pieces now. Or I can just give a check down here and just push the pawn up. And make sure no silly business happens. He's going to play bishop h6, trying to back rank mate me. And then I'll play king g8 and say no back rank mate me. Now opponent, oh, he does not going for cheapos anymore. So I suppose we'll just move our king up. Have a good time. Maybe he'll play rook over here. Yep. Trying to take this pawn for free. We'll move over here and make sure that doesn't happen. Slowly but surely win the game with our extra material. Maybe even play this move over here. Get our bishop open. Maybe I'll go. Uh, yeah, actually, this move seems pretty strong. So I think we'll play it. Stops the bishop from going in this diagonal. Our bishop's open now. If he checks us, we can always play something like g5. Opponent says he doesn't want us to do that. Let's play rook over here and just attack the pawn. Get a rook on a light square. Stop our opponent's bishop from going to d2. And if he moves... Oh, he moves the king up. All right. I think we just play g5. And take with our king. I mean, we're just converting this end game over here. Oh, that was a free pawn, by the way. What in the world? Well, sometimes I just miss the most obvious things in the pursuit of 
um, simplifying. So here, is he threatening something? I don't think so. I think I just take this f2 pawn. Yum yum. If he takes, I take. It's a little bit of a risky move, a little bit riskier than I would have liked, because he can take this pawn, but my this pawn just starts running up the board, which is a little bit dangerous for our opponents. When I say a little, I mean a lot. It's very dangerous for our opponents here. I was going to stop it. He plays there. His idea is to move the rook over here. I guess I just start marching up my my king. I mean, what's he going to do? Yep. I'm not even going to push the pawn because I think it's pretty protected here with our bishop doing a, such a good job. All right, let's play d5. He might try to decoy, maybe take here. But the idea of saying, hey, you can't win this game like that. But no, definitely possible to win the game like that. Ooh, this move. Didn't expect it, to be honest. But um, we get a trade off again. The more pieces traded off, the easier it is to win. So I'm down to trade. And this is completely winning now. Make sure I don't blunder any pieces and we should be fine. Two pawns, very easy. <laughs> Our opponent, my opponent just said, I tried to be a sneaky snake with you, but it didn't work. <laughs> All right. Let's just push the pawns up now. I think he's trying to play rook down here so he can try to do the skewer. Some silly business over here. Always got to be scared of these silly stuff that your opponent can be going for. Or as my opponent says, sneaky stuff. He wants to be a sneakiest of snake too. All right. Um, I think we'll just move king here. We're bringing our king closer to the end goal which is to get our pawn to the very end. You know what, let's just support this guy. You know what, let's put this guy up here first. That way he cannot um, take my pawn. Otherwise, I promote. <laughs> we can try to checkmate him over here. Um, then he'll have to check us. Then we move over here, and that should be a win. Yeah. If his king moves... Well, his king can't come closer, that's for sure. It, I wish that was a checkmate. In fact, we can threaten and checkmate with Rook over here and threaten a mate. Our opponent says, let's trade off pieces. I'm down. And our opponent want, and our opponent resigned. So these were two pretty instructive, like delayed Alapin like situations. One game to play for, one play the one game to play against. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's videos. If you have any questions about the delayed Alapin, I would be happy to answer, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.